Today I'm looking at the extremely popular Netgear AC1200 Wi-Fi router. The AC1200 is a dual band Wi-Fi router and this is important if you're coming from an older router like I was. And I'll show you how it holds up against my six year old Netgear router later in the video. And if you're wondering, the unit I'm testing today is the Base R6120 model. There is also a version with gigabit LAN connections and I'll leave a link to that model as well below the video. On the outside, the AC1200 is a pretty sleek looking device that'll fit right into any living room or gaming setup. It has a gloss black plastic body with two antennas on the back. Now unlike some other routers which can be placed upright, this can only be placed horizontally. It has a few LED indicators on the front and I'll talk about them when setting it up. It has all its ports and switches on the back. It has a USB port all the way to the right. I'll tell you what that's for in a minute. To the left of that is a reset or push to connect button, the power button, its DC socket, the blue ethernet port to connect to your modem, more about that soon, and four wired ethernet ports if you want wired internet. Now when you buy the router, it comes with its power adapter and an ethernet cable to hook it up to your modem. The quick start guide is also pretty simply laid out with very easy to follow instructions to set it up. One other important thing you'll find in the box is a small sticker that looks like this. The sticker will have a network name and password. We're gonna need this as we set it up and it's important to save it for future use if you ever need to reset your router to factory settings to start setting it up, make sure your modem is working and connect it to the internet. Now the modem could be a cable or fiber modem. The AC1200 will work with almost any type of internet connection. Plug the provided ethernet cable into the port on the back of your modem, then plug the other end into the blue port on your AC1200. Plug your AC adapter into the back of your router and then plug it into a wall outlet to power it on. Now if the LED indicator on the front doesn't turn on immediately, make sure your power button on the back is on. Once it comes to life, the LEDs will turn on and off as it goes through its connection sequence. This could take a few minutes. If everything works as expected, at least the three LEDs on the left should turn a solid green. We can now do the rest of the setup on a PC, Mac, or even a tablet. Though I'm going to be setting it up on a Mac, the process is exactly the same on a PC or tablet. First, go into your network settings and select the network name that you see on the little sticker that came with your router. Now, if you have a newer computer or device, you'll see two networks, the 2.4G network or the 5G network with the same name. If you can see the 5G network, I recommend connecting to that. It'll ask you for a password, enter the password on the sticker, and now you're logged into the Wi-Fi network. It should automatically open up a setup window. Now, if a window like that doesn't open up, you want to type in www.routerlogin.net into any web browser, and it should take you to the same setup window. For most people, it'll open up automatically. On this window, it asks you to set up a new admin password. Now, this is just to manage the router, and this isn't your Wi-Fi password. It's important to remember this password in case you need to make any changes to your router. Once you add a new password and the two security questions, on the screen that follows, it says you're now connected to the internet and it shows you all your usernames and passwords. You can print this page if you feel you're going to forget them, then click next and it takes you to the firmware upgrade page. And if your router needs new firmware, it'll display the new firmware version and you can click yes. The upgrade process takes about 10 to 15 minutes and your router will reboot after the process and the window might even close automatically. Once your router finishes rebooting, make sure all your lights are green as I mentioned before. Then open up a browser window and type in routerlogin.net and hit enter. A dialog box opens up and it asks you to enter the username and password we just created. This is your admin password and not your Wi-Fi password. The interface you see once you log in is your router's main interface. You won't have to log into the space often and you only need to use this to make major changes to your router. On the front page, you can see your internet status, see your Wi-Fi password, how many devices are connected, and a whole host of other settings. At this point, you should be connected to the internet and you can continue to use the web. However, the first thing I recommend doing for security reasons is to change the default Wi-Fi password. To do this, click on the wireless tile to open up the wireless settings page. Scroll down to where it says passphrase and change the password to whatever you want your password to be. I recommend changing the password on both the 2.4G network and the 5G network. Once you're done, click apply. Once this is saved, it will disconnect your Wi-Fi access. So you'll have to select your Wi-Fi network again in your computer's Wi-Fi settings and enter the new password. Once you're done with this, you're all set up and ready to browse the web. The AC1200's interface does give you access to quite a few cool features like parental control and content blocking and your 
welcome to check those out if you'd like. The only feature I'd like to talk about is that USB port I showed you on the back. That USB port allows you to plug in a USB drive or a hard drive or even a USB printer and let all the devices on your network use it. For example, I plugged in an eight gigabyte USB drive and it automatically recognized it. You can also set up the different sharing options for this drive and even change its name. I changed mine to network test and clicked apply. Now all the PCs or Macs on your network can access this drive and you can use it to quickly share files between computers on your network. Pretty neat little feature in my opinion. So how does the AC1200 perform? Well, most people buying this unit are probably going to be coming from an older Wi-Fi router. Mine, for example, was a six year old Netgear WNR1000 router. And I wanted to see if the AC1200 would offer a big improvement. I ran the speed test on both units within five minutes of each other using Google's own speed test site and repeated this several times. What I found, as you can see in these results, was that the AC1200 was much faster than the old Netgear when it came to download speeds, but was almost identical to the old router when it came to upload speeds. And I have to say the higher download speeds made a huge difference when it came to opening up pages on the web. I really wish I had upgraded my router sooner. So should you get the AC1200? If you're in the market for a new router and your router is a few years old, you'll definitely notice a huge difference. It's also affordable, pretty simple to set up, and held a very reliable signal throughout my tests. I definitely recommend getting this device. I'll leave a link to the AC1200 below in case you're looking to buy one. If you own one of these, tell me about your experience in the comments below. I'd love to know. Hope this video was useful. If it was, please hit that like button and subscribe for more reviews, unboxings, and how-to videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.